All right, point number two. Now, much good can come from strife if it's handled correctly. I just want to show you a couple of verses about suffering uh, when I preached about this, that, you know, suffering actually makes us better. Suffering and conflict actually grows us. Um, look at what it says here in Hebrews um, 2, 9 and 10. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death. So he was made a little lower than the angels for what? For the purpose of suffering, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation. Look at this. Perfect through sufferings. So Jesus Christ, part of the plan and part of the life of Jesus Christ was to go through this suffering, the suffering of his death. Remember, Paul said, you know, that I may know him and the fellowship of his suffering, he says, um, being conformable unto his death. And here it says here that, he, that the captain of their salvation was made perfect through sufferings. So what I want to just do for you this morning is just, just, just to remind you, give you a different spin on conflict. Give, give you a different perspective on conflict. Because remember, we naturally try to avoid conflict because we think it's bad. And conflict is bad. You know, conflict is, is, is part of a sinful world, you know, and having strife and, and division and things like that. But in the world that we live in now, we, can, we know that a lot of good can come from it. We can grow from it. Um, we can see here that Jesus was made perfect through suffering. So if you know that and you have that perspective in your relationship, you don't, you don't necessarily have to welcome conflict. But you know when you have conflict, it's a chance to grow. It's a chance for you and your wife to be stronger. So even though we want to avoid conflict, we know it's going to be inevitable, right? So it's better to change our perspective on it and look at it as though, well, I've had a conflict now and instead of, oh man, again, another conflict, another fight, another argument, you can think of it as, hey, this is another chance for me and my wife to grow closer. This is another chance for me to learn something. This is Because think about it, the reason why you're having this conflict is because there, there's something that you're not understanding about your wife. There's something you're not understanding about your partner or your husband. So this is a chance now to learn something new, tweak something in your life, do something different and improve your marriage, improve your relationship. Look what it says here in Job 23.10. Job says here, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So not only conflict in a relationship, but just in your everyday life, in your Christian life. You know, sometimes when we go through tribulation, we go through hard times, we're like, oh, again. And we, and we have the perspective, oh, I wish it would just go away, as opposed to the perspective of, hey, you know, this is good for me. God is allowing this to happen. What can I learn from it? You know, this, this is what, remember when Kevin preached about worry and he says, hey, it's like a feeling that we have to, it's a response to change something, right? Because we're worried about it so that we change something, we do something proactive about it to fix the situation. That's what I want you guys to think about conflict. That it's not, oh, I don't want it to happen again. It's, hey, this is another chance to change something. What is this conflict teaching me where I can change something in my life, I can make myself better and I can do something to improve this relationship and, um, Build this relationship, make it better. Uh, James 5, 11. This is another one just to do with Job. Because, we, you know, Job was tried. And, and look at what James comments on Job in, in James 5. Behold, we count them happy which endure. We count them happy which endure. I mean, it's a, I think that's a, that's a hard verse to internalize. Because, you know, when you're going through suffering and tribulation, you know, this, this is a very hard verse to live by. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. <clears throat> Romans 12, 17. So much good... That can come from strife if it's handled correctly. Look at uh, Romans 12. It says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So sometimes it isn't possible, right? Sometimes if you're standing up for God, you're standing up for what's right, um, there isn't peace there. But as much as possible, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. 
Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. So again, see, it's not wrong to be angry, but there is a right place to put your anger, isn't it? It says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, so don't get revenge, but rather instead give place unto wrath. So where do we place our wrath? It says here, For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. You see, so vengeance and revenge is God's place. It's not our place to have to go and seek revenge. And that's why when we get angry, when we realize we have been wrong, the right response is to, to give it to God and God will right the wrongs. We don't have to worry about getting justice ourselves when it comes to just personal relationships. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And this is a really important one for relations. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Because our natural response is what? When somebody does wrong to us, we want to do wrong back, right? We want to get back at them. We want to get even. But that's not the right thing to do. And in fact, that's just going to make your relationship worse. You know, so if you go and you try and justify yourself and you try and seek revenge and try and get back at them, you're not helping the relationship. You're not, number one, you're not obeying God. You're not glorifying God. And number two, you're just going to make your relationship spiral downward. So if you really want to have a successful marriage, you want to have a successful relationship, you need to put these principles into practice. So when you see conflict, handle it correctly. You've got to continue to love them. So conflict is good if it's handled correctly. It can strengthen, you know, it can, it can even strengthen a church. You know, that's why, you know, even when there's conflict in church, we have to have the right perspective. If there's conflict, we don't think, oh, you know, again, it's happening again. There's another problem. No, it's, it's what can I learn from this? Why did this conflict happen? And what can we do different? How can we grow from this? How can we love one another more through this conflict? So it can strengthen a church, it can strengthen a relationship, it can strengthen a friendship, and it can also strengthen a marriage. Because you can learn a lot from conflict. You remember when I told you guys last week that, uh, you know, me, me and my wife, you know, we never really fought that much, you know, at the beginning of our marriage, because what was there to fight about? You know, especially when you both come from a Christian background, you both agree on certain things, there was nothing to fight about. But eventually it does happen. You know, you, you get on each other's nerves or you do something or, you know, you say something that you shouldn't have. Um, or, you, or you, in my case, it's sort of like you start taking each other for granted. Do you know what I mean? You start taking for granted what your wife does for you. You start taking for granted what your husband does for you. And you no longer appreciate the work that they put in to make that relationship work. And then, you know, when you start taking each other for granted, you're not as appreciative anymore. You start talking to each other not as nicely anymore. And that starts to sort of, you know, fester and build up. And then eventually you'll have a conflict. You'll have an argument. And, you know, to me, you know, I used to think that way as well, where it'd be like, ah, oh, you know, I mean, Elizabeth's not here right now, but it's like, ah, oh, Elizabeth, she's, she's giving me the silent treatment again or whatever. But, you know, I, that's why I'm, what, the reason why I'm telling you to have the right perspective, I'm not saying I was always like, this is something that I have learned in my marriage, where... You know, you, if you have that perspective, you're not thinking how to rectify the situation. Because I started to realize, hey, the reason why my wife is not happy at this moment, the reason why we're having this conflict is because I think she's something that she isn't. You know, because I'm acting in a way and think, oh yeah, she's fine with that and everything like that. But then it starts to come out and I thank God for it because now I've learned, hey, this is something that actually bugs her. But I didn't know. Do you see what I mean by conflict can actually teach you things? And if you have that perspective, instead of focusing on, oh, why is this, like, you know, I don't want this conflict to happen, you'll focus on, hey, is why this conflict is happening and what I can learn from it what, and what I can do better. So you can learn a lot from conflict, like something you didn't know about your spouse and something you took for granted. 